All right, welcome back. Um, so today we are going to continue um, trig graphing. Um, the trig graphing that we'll be dealing with today is for the sine function. Um, so a couple of videos ago, I went over some uh, some of the very basics of graphing a sine wave um, and the five points. And so if you um, need to review that, just go back and click on that video and we'll and I go through it. Um, so today, uh, what's different about this sine wave is the C value right here has been added. Now this C value, what's going to happen is it's going to uh, what's called phase shift, basically shift your graph either left or right, depending on whether that number is positive or negative. Okay, so before we get into that and before actually seeing how this graphs, these graphs move, and all the funness that comes along with figuring out the new points because of this value. Um, let's review um, some of the basics that we covered thus far. So our A, that's found here, highlighted in blue. Let's highlight in blue. All right, our A is our amplitude. Okay, um, so that tells whether the graph's going to go up or down depending on if a is positive or negative and it tells you how high and how low below above and below the x-axis um, the wave goes okay um, our b value or actually not our b value but our uh, period length right uh, also with trig graphs you have period length uh, so for sine it's 2 pi divided by your B. Your B value is right here, highlighted in red. Okay, um, so whatever the number that is, you take 2 pi divided by that number, and that'll figure out your period length. And then our new number now, or a new value that's been added is what's called the phase shift. So phase shift, okay, and that is figured by taking your C, whatever that is, your C divided by the B value. Okay, and like I said, that is going to do some things to the graph. It's going to move it to the left or right um, today, and the problems that you'll have today. So, so yeah. So, um, all right. So let's just get started with the the pro the actual problems below, and you'll kind of see what I mean by all this. Okay. Um, uh, in these problems that you see on the screen, I probably didn't leave enough space um, to do these. Um, there is a lot to um, kind of figure up before you start plotting points. Um, I'll also um, I'll identify both the amplitude, uh, the period length, and then the phase shift. And then once I have that, then we'll get into actually the steps, again, the steps of finding the points to plot and then plotting them. So yeah, so there's a lot that to do. So, all right, so here we go. So y equals sine of x minus pi. Okay, so if you look at this, your amplitude, so I will write up, up, up here. So amplitude is one. Your period length um, and all the problems that you have that you see on the screen and that you'll have for your homework today, you'll take two pi divided by the number in front of x, this being 1, right? So your period length is 2 pi. And then your phase shift, um, I'll abbreviate that as ps. OK, your phase shift is 1 pi divided by 1, which equals uh, 1 pi, or just pi. OK, now if you uh, have watched some of my other videos, right, um, I talked about those five points, um, five points with sine and cosine that are always the same that you always start with, right? Um, if you haven't seen that, you can go either watch that video or I'll show you how to do that right now. So you t basically to find the five points um, along the x-axis that you'll plot to use, whether you go up or down or on the x-axis, you basically take your period length, so you take 2 pi, and you divide it by 4. Okay, when you do that, you get pi over 2. So what that means is sine always starts at 0. And then 
each mark along the x-axis is going to go up pi over 2 units. Okay, so that's 0, pi over 2, uh, 2 pi over 2, or pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay, now, so I'll erase this so I can have some in. Okay, so now here's my five points. If you've seen my other videos, these five points are the same five points that we used to graph all the sine functions that we did the other day. Okay, but now because we have a phase shift, a phase shift of pi units to the right, I have to add, sorry about that, board sometimes likes to pick out. So I have to add pi units to every point. Okay, and what the results of this is what you'll see in a minute is the five points that I will plot along the x-axis that I'll use to graph my sine wave. Okay, so zero plus pi is pi. One half plus one is one and a half. One and a half as a improper fraction is three halves or three pi over two. One pi plus one pi is two pi. One and a half plus one is uh, two and a half. Two and a half as an improper fraction is five pi over two and then 2 plus 1 is 3 pi, okay? So these five points right here that I found, okay, these are my five points that I will plot along the x-axis of your graph, okay? So, it's, um, so I'll put pi right here. The next one I'll put 3 pi over 2, and then I'll go 2 pi, and then I'll put 5 pi over 2, and 3 pi. Okay, so like, like I said, if you watched my video on graphing uh, the basic sine function, we always started at the origin. But because we have a phase shift, now we start at pi. So we put our dot there, and since our amplitude's positive, our graph's going to go up. And since our amplitude is 1, our graph's going to go up. So the next, the next dot, the next point over on the x-axis is 3 pi over 2, so I'm going to go up to my amplitude up there, and I'll put a dot there. And then my next point over, sine starts coming back down, and we'll cross the x-axis, so you go down, and then at 5 pi over 2 is at its minimum or lowest point of the wave of the period, and then at 3 pi you come back to where you started at the x-axis. Okay, so if you connect your dots, you get the nice little bend, and there you go. So there's your sine wave, and it's been shifted to the right pi units. Okay. Um, all right, the next one, and this is where um, I had messed up earlier. Um, so if you watched my prior video, I apologize. I uh, was shown by a student, actually. <laughs> Um, she had asked me a good question and it, I was able to catch my air. So I'll show you, and when I get to that, I'll tell you what my air was. Okay, so looking at this, my amplitude is 2, right, because it's in front of the, so the trig function, so it's 2. Um, my period length, P, is 2 pi, and we always take 2 pi divided by the number in front of the x, which is 2. So 2 pi divided by 2 is equal to pi. All right, and then your phase shift, which is ps, I'll bring you as ps. Remember, you take pi over 2 and divide it by your b value, which in this case is 2, OK? So now, in order to do this, OK, I always tell my students to kind of ignore pi for a minute and just think of that as one half divided by two, right? So you take one half and divide it by two, you get one fourth, right? And then you just replace one or with one, you put pi next to it. So it's one pi over four or just pi over four. So our graph has been shifted over to the right pi over four units. Okay, now, um, 
if you watched my last video, I went back to these original 5.0 pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, right? And I shifted it over and added pi over 4 units, and that, that's where my error was, okay? In order to find these five points, right, you have to take your period length and divide it by 4, right? Because our period length, because this problem had a 2, has a 2 in front of the x, my period has shrunk from 2 pi to just pi. Okay, so if you take pi, um, each point, if you take pi, your period length, and you divide it by 4, right, you get pi over 4. So what does that mean? So basically that means your 5 points are 0, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, um, 3 pi over 4, and 4 pi over 4, which is pi. Okay, so those, there are your four points, with 0 being your fifth point, right, so there's your 5. And now you can add in your phase shift, so for each of these points, you add in pi over 4, Okay, so when you do this, you get pi over 4. Uh, 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is 1 half, so that's pi over 2. 1 half plus 1 fourth is 3 fourths, so 3 pi over 4. 3 fourths plus a fourth is 1, so that's pi. And then 1 pi plus 1 fourth is 1 and a fourth, which as a mixed or improper fraction is 4 pi over 5 pi over 4. Okay, so what do you do with these five points? Well, now that you have these five, these are your five that you use and you plot along the x-axis. Okay, so you draw your graph. Okay, plot your, uh, plot your, plot these points. So pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, pi. 5 pi over 4. Okay, now my amplitude, if I look back, our amplitude is 2. So I'm going to put those along the y axis. So remember, sine always starts at 0, or x equals 0. And then uh, I go, my next point, because my amplitude's positive, I go up. So at the next point, I go up my amplitude. So y equals 2. And then my next point, I come back down and cross the x-axis. And then my next point, I go below at the negative y equals 2. And then I come back, so I'm right there. So there's my graph. Okay. Um, okay. So the last one. All right. Um, this last one is... I'll start writing it, and then I'll probably have to get rid of this graph here off to the right, just so I can graph it, because um, I kind of ran out of room. Okay, so if you look at this, my amplitude is 1, right? There's no number in front of sine, so it's just 1. It's understood 1. My period length is 2 pi over 3, and there's nothing I can do to simplify that. It's just 2 pi over 3. And then my phase shift is pi over 3 divided by 3. Now, if you figure that up, pi over 3 divided by 3 is pi over 9. So it's a 9. Awesome. Okay, now to figure up each of the uh, five points that I'll add my phase shift to, I have to take my period length, so 2 pi over 3 and divide it by 4, okay, because um, because normally a normal sine wave starts at 0, so that's always your fifth point. That's why I divide it by 4 and not 5, okay? Um, so if you take 2 pi divided by, uh, 2 pi over 3 divided by 4, that is um, pi over 6, 
Okay, so what that means is my graph is going to go up by six each time. Okay, so I'll rewrite that here. So 2 pi over 3 divided by uh, 4 equals pi over 6. Okay, um, basically it equals uh, 2 pi over 12, which simplifies to uh, 1 pi over 6 or just pi over 6. All right, so my points, my five points that I'll add my phase shift to are 0, pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3, 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, uh, 4 pi over 6, which is um, 2 pi over 3. Okay, so there's my five points. I know I'm writing them small because I'm running out of room. Hopefully you can see that those are all five points. Okay, so now, now that I have my five points, I go over and I add to each of these five points my phase shift. Okay, and when you do this, um, this is going to really force you to be really good at adding and subtracting fractions. In this case, it's adding. So 0 plus pi over 9 is pi over 9. That's the easy one. Okay, uh, pi over 6 plus pi over 9. So pi over 6 plus pi over 9 is 5 pi over 18. Let me do that. It's not plus. Love smart boys. Okay, so five pi over eighteen. Okay, one third plus one ninth is uh, four pi over nine. Okay, one half plus one ninth is 11 pi over 18. And then uh, this is 7 pi over 9. Okay. So there's my five points. And let me erase this so you can see how I plot those five points. My board's breaking up. Okay, so I plot these five points. Five over six. Oh, take that back. My bad. So, pi over 9, pi pi over 18, 4 pi over 9, 11 pi over 18, 7 pi over 9. Okay, uh, my amplitude is 1, and I'll put negative 1 down here. So, I start at pi over 9, I go up. I come back down to the x-axis, I come below, and I come back, and I connect them in that sort of fashion. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully that has kind of cleared some stuff up, and hopefully I haven't made any more big mistakes. If you have, or if I have, um, please comment below, and I'll try to fix them and or do another video to uh, catch my mistakes. Um, still still learning and still remembering all the fun stuff that goes along with trig graphing because it it is a booger to um, just kind of keep everything straight so, so yeah so thanks